Mel Mel Famous Cigarettes presents The Big Story. Morning, Mr. Wilson. Morning, ma'am. What'll it be today? I'd like a tube of toothpaste. Toothpaste, yeah. A jar of cold cream. Uh-huh. And a pound of arsenic. Arsenic? Yes. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you what it's for, ma'am. Why, surely. It's for rest. The Big Story, another in a thrilling series based on true experiences of newspaper reporters. Tonight, to Aubrey Maddock of the Hartford Daily Current, goes the Pell-Mell Award for The Big Story. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package, Pall Mall. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pall Mall? There's a reason. Pall Mall famous cigarettes... Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pall Malls are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pall Malls' greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. Now, the exciting and authentic story of the case of the final curtain. Assistant City Editor of the Hartford Daily Current. You're sitting at your desk one afternoon, idly tapping out a story and reflecting that things are pretty quiet around the offices of the Current when suddenly... Are you a reporter? Well, well yes, but... Uh... I, I've just got to talk to you. I've got to tell you about it. Tell me about what? I did it. It's as if I did it with my own hands, but I didn't mean to, honestly. I didn't... You didn't mean to do what? <laughs> Hey, look, take it easy. I, I told the police, but they didn't believe me. You've got to believe me. You've just got to. I've got to talk to somebody. No, no, take it easy. If I'd known what I was doing, it would have been different, but you don't until after, and then it's too late. Relax. Cigarette? Uh, yes, please. Thanks. Better now? I, I guess so. Suppose you start from the beginning and tell me what's on your mind. Would you really listen? That's what I'm here for. I have a tiny apartment. My father had been visiting me for a long time. I got back home one day and I could hear him rehearsing Shakespeare as I came down the hall. Maybe that's what started it. I hated it. He used to be an actor and he never got over it. I opened the hall door. <laughs> There's no blur in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Dad, I'm home. Or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Hello, Lucy. Just brushing up on my diaphragm control. To die, to sleep. Dad! Won't you ever forget you were an actor? Were an actor? My dear, you forget yourself. Do I? Lucy, from your tone of voice, I judge that I have overstayed my visit with you. Dad, I don't mean to be cruel, but I guess you have in a way. I can't ever have my friends up. You're always here quoting things at them or telling them about the parts you've played. It's just not fair. I see. Oh, Dad, I don't mean to hurt you. It's the last thing I want to do. I am but... expecting a letter from my producer. He should have something for me this morning. Oh, Dad... Daddy, look. 
When I was in Windsor last week, I stopped in to see that Mrs. Taylor for you. And who, might I ask, is that Mrs. Taylor? She runs a home in Windsor for the infirm. Uh, surely you don't pretend to put me in that class. That's just what she calls her home. For $1,000, she takes care of you completely, gives you room and board from the day you get there until... Well, and, until... Until they ring down the final curtain. Is that it? Well, yes. Are you suggesting that I go to this home for the infirm, Lucy? Dad, it would be nice for you. You'd, you'd, have, you'd have a nice room of your own, and I know that every minute you'd had company and be being taken care of. Mm. If you don't like it there, you don't have to stay. But you will like it, Dad. So, uh, this is Mrs. Taylor's establishment, is it? Yes. Now, remember, Dad, please be charming to her. Lucy... I have played to pack crowds in a tent in Kansas. I have done my 40 weeks at the Empire Theater on Broadway. Presidents have watched me act. And you tell me I must captivate this elderly proprietress of a boarding establishment? Dad, <laughs> please, here comes someone. Yes? Mrs. Taylor, I'm Lucy Wellington. Oh, of course, then. This must be your father. It is. Well, would you come in? Charming home you have here, Mrs. Taylor. Thank you. I hope you'll be happy here with us. Uh, yes. Now, I suppose you'll want to say goodbye to your daughter, so I'll just leave you folks alone for a minute or two, and then I'll be back to get you settled. Uh, thank you. Just make yourselves at home. Well, Dad? Lucy. Do you think you'll be happy here? Don't worry about me. I want you to be happy, Dad. Lucy, I can be honest with myself at times. My life is over. I've taken all my bows and curtain calls. And I'm just sitting in an empty theater, waiting for my exit cue. This is as good a place as any to wait. If you don't like it, here, let me know and I'll bring you back home. Thank you. I guess I better go. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I would say good night till it be morrow. Oh, I forgot. You don't like to hear me emote. Goodbye, Lucy. Goodbye, Dad. God bless you. Oh. <laughs> Gracious, Mr. Wellington, you startled me standing so still there by the door. Oh. This is Taylor. I... I just said goodbye to my daughter. Well, saying goodbye to kinfolk is always a little hard on the heartstrings, Mr. Wellington. But you'll be happy here, I'm sure. Everybody is. Why, nobody ever leaves my home. Except, of course, when they die. Mr. Wellington. Who is it? Me, Luke Briggs. I come for a game of cribbage. Come in, come in, my friend. Thank you kindly. <sighs> I see you got the cards out. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's just the thing to make the time pass. It uh, doesn't seem as if I've been here at Mrs. Taylor's for almost two months, does it? Still like it here? Of course. Not looking so pert as you might. Just a little indigestion. I see. Mr. Wellington, you got to get out of here. What are you talking about? You paid your thousand dollars in advance. You got to get out of here. What do you mean? Mrs. Grumman paid her thousand dollars in advance. She died last night. They took her away just before sunup. Well, I'm 
I'm sorry to No, hear. Pete Dawes paid his thousand dollars in advance. He died last week. They took him away at midnight. Death comes to everyone, Luke. Not like it does in this house. When it's natural, it comes in its time, and it comes soft. Death don't care whether you pay a thousand dollars to Mrs. Taylor in advance or not. What are you driving at? I'm safe. I pay my room and board by the week. It's no profit to Mrs. Taylor for me to die early. But with them that pays in advance... Luke, you're crazy. Shh, listen. Late at night, I can hear horses' hoofs coming, clop, 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 up the dirt road. I can hear the creak of a wagon as they back it up against the porch and footsteps carrying something heavy. I can hear that something heavy thud into the wagon. And then the horse's hoofs start up the road again, softer and softer, till there's nothing more to hear but the hoot owl. And then I know somebody else has died, and they're taking him away in the night. Luke, stop it. Shh. You're next on Mrs. Taylor's list, I'm telling you. What makes you say that? I've seen it happen. First, a special lemonade, a particular pie made special for someone, and then a mite of indigestion, and then I hear the horse's hoof coming up the road. To the stop end. it, stop it, stop it, you fool! Uh, I'm sorry. I, I seem to be a little upset this evening. Su suppose we leave our game until tomorrow night. If that's the way you want it. Yes. Yes, I'd... I'd like to lie down for a while. I... I think I'd like to go to sleep. Daddy, if you don't like this place, let me know. Let me know and I'll bring you home. But it's... Just a touch of indigestion. Just indigestion. Just a touch. You got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. Out. Nobody leaves my home. Nobody ever leaves my home. Except, of course, when they die. You know, I can tell when somebody has died. I can hear the horses' hoofs on the road. Clack, clack. But they don't leave unless they die. Dad, come back, come back, come back. Have a little of this drink first. Just a little drink. No, Dad, don't, don't, don't. Just a little sip. I made it special for you. Just for you. No, 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 no. Mr. Wellington, wake up. Ah! Uh, oh, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, I must have had a nightmare. I should say you must have. What's that? Just a hoot owl outside the window. Here, drink this. No. No. It's just a sedative. I fixed it special for you. I, I don't want to take it away. But it will settle you. Here now, take the glass. But I, drink it down. I need... That's it. That's it. Now then, Mr. Wellington, you won't have to worry anymore. Wellington, this is Mrs. Taylor calling. I'm sorry to bother you this time of night, but it looks like your father's took bad. Oh, no, no, no need to come tonight, but I think you better come visit him tomorrow morning. We'll be back in just a moment with tonight's big story, but first, a word from Cy Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to pell-mell? Four notes.
notes that are alike and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package, Pell Mell. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction that no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. America's leading cigarettes. One is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. we return you to our narrator, Bob Sloan, and tonight's big story. You, Aubrey Maddock, assistant city editor, sit at your desk at the Hartford Daily Current and listen intently to the half-hysterical girl as she sobs out a weird and unbelievable story. Finally, she says... That's, that's about the whole of it, Mr. Maddock. When I got to the home the next morning, Dad was dead. He died just ten minutes after Mrs. Taylor called me. What did she give as the cause of death? Gastric ulcers. But he was poisoned. He never had a sign of any kind of ulcer. He was poisoned by that horrible woman, and I made him go there. Now let me ask you just one question, Miss Wellington. You've outlined a very complete story of just how your father died. How do you know all these things? The last time I saw Dad at the home, he was so frightened underneath. I should have known then. I should have taken him away then, but I didn't know he's dead. Well, that doesn't answer my question. You told me how he died. You even told me what he dreamed. How can you possibly know all this? Well, I don't actually know it, I suppose, but it could have been something like that. It must have been something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, if so, it's the biggest, hottest lead on a story I've ever gotten. But if not, it's the most malicious, evil piece of slander I've ever heard. And as a newspaper man, I guess it's up to me to find out which it is. What are you going to do? I'm going up to Windsor to take a look around. <laughs> Yes, sir. Something I can do for you? You own this drugstore? Yes, I do. Get most of the local trade here in Windsor? Sure do. You sell poison here? Why do you want to know? I'm very interested in the sale of poison in Windsor during the past few years. Well, I don't see Doesn't how the state it... require every druggist to keep a poison register showing who bought what kind of poison when and for what? Yes, but... Let's see it. Who are you, anyhow? Just a guy who's interested in poisons. Where's the register? Right here. Thanks. Yeah. August, September, October. October 21st. Mrs. Beatrice Taylor. Six ounces of arsenic. Use for rats and mice. That's Mrs. Taylor who runs the home out on Prospect. Uh-huh. February 17th. Mrs. Beatrice Taylor. 13 ounces of arsenic. Use for bugs and mice. And again, May 26th. Mrs. Beatrice Taylor. 10 ounces of arsenic acid. Use for rats and mice. Ten ounces on the 26th of May. Look here. Isn't this quite a bit of poison for any one person to buy? No, can't say so. Most of the folks around here buy arsenic poison for exterminating purposes. I see. Well, just the same, I think I'll go and have a few words with Mrs. Taylor, just for the record. <laughs> Maddock, I, I can't tell you how glad I am that you came. Why is that, Mrs. Taylor? Well, these rumors that one of my boarders was poisoned have naturally upset me. It's nonsense, of course, but still talk like that hurts the reputation of a nursing home. Did you think of that when you bought the poison? What do you mean? I mean that I've been down to the local drugstore and find that you purchased pounds of arsenic, enough to poison a lot of boarders. Oh, mercy. You don't think I bought that for anything except rats and mice, do you? What should I think? Maybe you use it for rats and mice. But Jay Wellington died of a gastric ulcer just four days after your last arsenic purchase. You're not serious about this. I'm very serious. Mr. Maddox, we're both intelligent folks. We can look at this whole nonsensical story intelligently. 
Now, now, if you were setting out to poison somebody, would you buy the poison at a local drugstore? Would you buy it where everybody knows you by name and where everybody knows everybody else's business? Well, Of course I... not. You'd steal it or get it some underhanded way if you were going to use it for murder. Now, wouldn't you? I suppose so. Of course, I've only heard Miss Wellington's side of the story. And that poor child is half out of her mind with grief and guilt because she didn't get here in time to be with her father at the end. She was terribly upset. I gather she was a mite harsh with him from time to time. That preys on her mind now that he's gone. I can understand how she feels, poor child. Lord knows I try to be forgiving. She's very bitter about you. Mr. Maddox, would you like to know why? Yes. All right, I'll tell you. She claims her father had $500 when he came to the home. And she thinks I've stolen it. Why? Because she can't find it with her father's things. Fighting over that poor soul's grave for money, too. Well, he didn't have a cent. And if he did, I I'd never touch a thing that didn't belong to me. You're being very fair, Mrs. Taylor. Heaven knows I try to be. Although at times it does seem like I have more than my share of trouble. Well, I'm sorry to have added to it, Mrs. Taylor. Well, that's quite all right, Mr. Maddox. Thank you for taking the bother to drop in here. Oh, there's no bother at all, ma'am. I have another visit to pay in Windsor, anyhow. Is this the office of the Windsor County Clerk? Sure is. Where's the clerk? Right here. You? Me. Well, I, I'm Aubrey Maddock of the Hartford Daily Current. Say, I've been meaning to talk to one of you newspaper people. Oh, yeah? Well, look, Pop, I... Subscribed to your paper last February. Oh. Paid up full of us, too. Then come last April. I was away for, ooh, for two weeks and a bit. Uh, Seemed to me I ought to get my money back for those two weeks. Well, look, Pop, I'll take it up personally with the circulation manager. But right That's now... That's we... right, neighborly of you, young fellow. Like the paper? Fine, I do. Yeah, I'm glad to hear Especially it. Look, Pop, Especially them farm I... articles you got. Good. And now, the look, recipes. I... My wife always looks for them recipes. Pop! Uh, yeah? You keep the death certificates for Windsor County here? Sure do. Well, then, for the love of Pete, can I see them? It's all the shouting about. Sure you can see them. You thumb through the endless certificates, and just on a chance, you make notes of all the deaths that took place at Mrs. Taylor's home. And you do a little extra checking, and what you find makes you sit up straight and whistle. What's up, young fella? Uh, my hair, Pop. Up on end. Hey? Sorry, no time for chit-chat now. Here, yeah, where are you going with them certificates? To the Hartford Chief of Police. You do take the certificates to the police chief. Later. But first you do a little checking with some of Mrs. Taylor's neighbors and former boarders. You visit the relatives of some of the deceased. And then, armed with explosive information, you take the death certificates and your big story to the Hartford Chief of Police. I didn't make too much of the arsenic purchases at first, Chief. Poison might have been for rats, in spite of Jay Wellington's sudden death just four days after the last purchase. Could be coincidence, sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mrs. Taylor told a very convincing story, maybe a little too convincing. So just on a hunch, I dropped in at the county clerk's office and I... Well, take a look at these statistics. What are they? The number of deaths at the Taylor home during the past five years. Forty-eight, eh? Forty-eight. Not surprising. What do you mean? That's an awful lot of deaths. But Maddock, it's a home for old people. The death rate's bound to be high. That's where you're wrong. I checked the figures on the Hartford Old People's Home just to compare. You know how much bigger the Hartford home is than Mrs. Taylor's? About five times as big. Six times as big. And yet the number of deaths is the same in both homes. Forty-eight in five years. How about that? Uh, doesn't look good. It isn't. And here's another interesting point. At least 20 of the deaths Mrs. Taylor reported looked highly suspicious. And each of those 20 boarders were of the class that paid $1,000 outright for board until death. I've checked the others and found out that the week-to-week -week boarders have held to a normal death rate. Now, does that or does that not look like mass murder? It does. But no proof. We'll take care of that. Autopsy? Exactly. We'll get in touch with you. <laughs> Why, Mr. Maddock. Yes, Miss Taylor. And this is the Hartford Chief of Police with me. We'd like to ask you some questions. Why, why, surely. 
come in. Thank you. If you'll just come into the parlor, I haven't dusted yet. Been making a special dessert for one of my boarders. Sit down, won't you? Mrs. Taylor, the daughter of one of your deceased patients, reported some suspicious facts about her father's death. Oh, you mean that Wellington girl again? What about it, Mrs. Taylor? Well, like I told Mr. Maddock here, I'm anxious to clear up all these false rumors. So you just ask me any questions you want, and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, Mrs. Taylor. How do you account for the fact that you bought poison in large quantities? Like I said before, it was for rats and mice. What about the manner in which you removed human bodies from the home during the night? Miss Wellington and others have stated that bodies were gone before their relatives arrived here. Well, I like to get the body out of the house as soon as death occurs. It disturbs the other boarders. And why was it that the highest death rate was amongst those who paid you $1,000 outright for board? I can't imagine where you got such an idea. Why were bodies shipped secretly out of the county without a permit? Why, I... Why did an autopsy on Jay Wellington and another one of your boarders show that both died of poison and not natural causes? An autopsy? You did an autopsy? Come along, Mrs. Taylor. I have a warrant for your arrest. You can't prove anything. That girl talked too much, but you can't prove anything. You can't really know. I was too careful. I had an answer for everything. You'll see. I'll hang before I admit I did it. You're probably right, Mrs. Taylor. You'll hang. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Aubrey Maddock of the Hartford Daily Current with the final details of tonight's big story. <laughs> Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> Now we read you that telegram from Aubrey Maddock of the Hartford Daily Current. Poisoner in tonight's big story was convicted of first-degree murder. However, an appeal was granted and the conviction was changed to second degree. Given a life prison sentence, she was subsequently transferred to the hospital for the insane at Middletown. Many thanks for tonight's Pell-Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Maddock. The makers of Pell-Mell famous cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell-Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station when Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the pages of the Des Moines Tribune. Byline, Russell Wilson. A big story that reached its climax with an automobile ride that ended in death at dark. <laughs> The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor and directed by Harry Ingram with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Gail Ingram. Your narrator was Bob Sloan and Les Tremaine played the part of Aubrey Maddock. All names in tonight's story except that of Mr. Maddock were fictitious, but the dramatization was based on a true and authentic case. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes and reminding you of the ideal Christmas gift. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes in their special holiday carton. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm -hmm.